Hi, and welcome to another episode of CCSD News and Review. I'm Diane Harmon. And I'm Brendan Lowe. We start today with the long-awaited release of school information cards, the family school guide, and the high school guide. Parents originally raised the idea for the cards, which feature comparable information about Camden's public schools, during Superintendent Rahana Fard's 100-day listening tour back in fall 2013. Community feedback in summer and fall of 2014 informed both the content and the design of the cards. Superintendent Rahana Fard released the cards to parents and community school coordinators while featuring the hard copy guides and a brand new section of the website. You can explore the guides and learn, about, learn more about your school by visiting www.camden.k12.nj.us slash infocards. The other big news this spring is the coming transformation of five district schools, which will open in fall 2015 as Renaissance schools. Parents, Mayor Red, and community leaders joined Superintendent Rohana Fard for the announcement, which followed a series of neighborhood meetings in every ward of the city. What we are here announcing today is a plan to revitalize our most struggling schools. Rather than give up on them, we are reinvesting in those schools. Rather than scattering and displacing kids, we are asking our students and families to stay and let us prove that they can get an excellent education in a public neighborhood school. <laughs> For next school year, the school district will partner with three of the most successful nonprofit organizations in the country, KIPP, Mastery, and Uncommon, to lead five of our most struggling neighborhood schools in dilapidated buildings. So today we are bringing this extraordinary approach to educating our children to five of our schools that have struggled for too long. Bonzel, East Camden Middle, McGraw, Molina, and Whittier. <laughs> Through this partnership, these nonprofit organizations will modernize and renovate outdated school buildings that have a lot of great history. They will bring in new leadership teams and they will serve all students in those neighborhoods. So here's what these changes will mean. All children attending these five schools can stay in their school community. All children will continue to attend school in their building as it is renovated or they will attend a brand new school building. All students in these communities are guaranteed a seat. So, no lottery, no selective admissions. The same school, the same school names, the same students, a new leadership team, more modern school facilities. That is what we're delivering. Following the announcement, the school district held office hours and meetings for staff members and launched a massive outreach campaign for families. More than 50 team members knocked on more than 1,000 doors and placed more than 1,300 calls to make sure that families who had students at the impacted schools are aware of what is changing and why. As part of that outreach, the superintendent participated in a live show here on CCSD-TV. Good evening and welcome to Our City, Our Schools, Our Voice. This evening we are discussing the big news our mayor and superintendent announced yesterday. Next year, five of our most struggling schools will become Renaissance neighborhood public schools, which have been extremely successful in Camden. I am pleased to be joined tonight by Superintendent Paymon Ruhaniford, Assemblyman Angen Fuentes, and Katrina McCombs, a longtime Camden educational leader who heads up the District Office of Early Childhood Education. As winter melted into spring, district schools kept busy. Let's recap a number of recent events. 
February was Black History Month, and there were events at the District Parent Center, the Creative Arts Morgan Village Academy, and many other sites throughout the city. March was Women's History Month, and the District Parent Advisory Council held a special event to honor the women in their lives. The thing that I know about us is that we're conquerors, and we're overcomers, and we don't give up. And although sometimes my, life might knock you down, you'll find a way to get back up. But there will be those occasions, those unpleasant moments, when you find yourself knocked down on the ground hit by an obstacle or a challenge that you didn't expect, and you're not really sure if this is going to be the thing that takes you out. Do I really have what it takes to get back up? Can I do this? And in that moment, you just need a friendly reminder, someone to come over, tap you on your shoulder, give you a hand, and pull you back up on your feet, and remind you that you got this. I want you to turn to the person sitting next to you right now and tell her or him, you got this. <laughs> now turn to the person on the other side because we don't want to leave anybody out and let them know you got this. And today I'm your reminder. I stopped by today just to remind you of your strength. April finally warmed up and Davis School became the first in the city to take swimming lessons over at the Croc Center. For eight weeks, the 21st graders will learn how to swim in the beautiful Aquatic Center over in Kramer Hill. Also, the district received great news as Ms. Kelly Wharton Davis of Wiggins Family School was named South Jersey Magazine's Teacher of the Year. Her student Adriana nominated Ms. W.D., as she's known, who was well-deserving of the honor. Her class celebrated her accomplishment when the superintendent surprised Ms. Wharton Davis with a beautiful bouquet of flowers. Before the close of school news, we have some sad news to share. Ms. Evelyn Pagan, the community school coordinator at Molina, who served that school community for four decades and has appeared on this station, passed away in late March. The parent room at Molina, where Ms. Pagan dedicated so much of her time to serve her families, will be dedicated in her honor in early May. Ms. Pagan will be sorely missed. As we transition to city news, we focus on the environment. The start of spring brought the launch of the Camden Clean campaign, as well as Earth Day celebrations. Mayor Dana Red was out to mark both occasions. The mayor also announced that Camden Night Gardens will return on Friday, May 1st. In sports, Camden High and Woodrow Wilson both have baseball, softball, and track teams in competition. Middle school grades are gearing up for the end-of-year softball tournament. But in a blast from the past, Advisory Board Member Minister Wasim Mohammed sat down recently with Mike Rozier, a Camden native who won the Heisman Trophy as college football's best player in 1983. Here's a clip of the interview. Back in my days, my whole neighborhood could correct me. If I'm out of line, Mr. Rocco is a great family across the street from Italian family. They straightened me out. The ball, um, so. Everybody on my block knew of the Rosiers and we knew of them. Mm -hmm. and everybody knew their kids and their mothers. How you doing, Mr. Rockabout? How you doing, Ms. Gordon? Or every morning, every time you see somebody, you spoke to them, you do the right thing. That's what we was brought up. Mm -hmm. Today, the kids don't even say hello to you. Yes, so, oh, hold the door for somebody, or older person that you don't know. Hold the door for them. Mm -hmm. That's where I was raised. Mm -hmm. I still do it today. And I, yes, I still let my son now, as 12, Somebody comes to the door. You don't got to know that person over that door. You hold that door for that young lady. That's right. Or that old, older gentleman, all right? Because one day, you're going to be an older person, and you hope somebody do that for your parents. The full interview, which was conducted as part of the Wasim Muhammad Show, is now available on our YouTube channel. For this week's principal profile, we visited Ann Katawaki, the school leader of Revolution Primary, the Kip Cooper Norcross Academy School over in Landing Square. Ms. Katawaki talked about the school's first year and how the kindergartners are preparing to move into their brand new building next year. 
My name is Ann Katawaki. I'm the school leader here at Kip Cooper Norcross Academy Elementary School. So our school is special because um, from kindergarten on, we have a focus on making sure that our kids are ready to go through and to college. To making sure that our kids go to and through college. So what that means at the kindergarten level is that we're already starting to talk about building character and what it means to be a good student and a well-rounded student. and that means that it's important not just to uh, excel academically, but also to have strong character. And character isn't t something that's taught uniformly at any grade, especially at kindergarten. Why, why is it so important? Um, character is important because it's not enough. Um, to graduate college, it's not enough to just have strong academics. You also have to be a good person. So we try to teach our kids about working hard and having um, having grit and passion, and we talk to them about being resilient and what it means to be kind and to love um, not just others, other students and other, um, other people, but to love themselves as well. And what do you say to the people uh, who might argue you're either born resilient or you're not, you're either born passionate or you're not, you can't teach that, like how do you teach such a thing? Um, there's plenty of research out there that shows that you can teach a lot of that. And so we do a lot, um, we read a lot, and we try to make sure that we're learning about what it means to teach a kid character. And um, you know, there's a lot out there that says actually teaching kids to have grit will actually help them grow their brain. So that's a big focus that we have here. Uh, your school is also a renaissance school. Can you tell us a little bit about what that means? It's a different kind of public school. So a renaissance school means that we are a public school. Um, but it's sort of a hybrid between a charter school and a district school. So we're sort of like a charter school in that we have um, our own board that governs us, but we're also working in direct partnership with the Camden City Schools. And so um, that allows us to be a neighborhood school for the kids uh, right here in Lanning Square in Cooper Plaza. And it also means that we um, have money to build new and better facilities for our kids. And uh, where, where did you go to school? What was maybe your favorite subject um, growing up or a favorite teacher who had a big impact on you? So I'm from Chicago. So I went to, um, I went to a Catholic school in Chicago through fourth grade. And then I attended uh, public schools outside of Chicago uh, for middle school and returned back to the city for high school. Um, and then for college, I went to the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana which was a great experience. I was a, um, I was a molecular and cellular biology major. So science was my favorite. I was a big math and science. Um, I, I was very interested in math and science growing up, which I think actually was very influential on me because it's typically a subject, or both of those subjects are typically male dominated. So to be a female in the uh, math and science field taught me a lot about um, being independent and making sure that um, I had a lot of willpower and strength to get to get through those courses. Mm -hmm. And how did you end up as a principal and not a molecular biologist? <laughs> um, that's a great question. I uh, I was pre med in undergrad and decided that I wasn't quite ready to commit to the path of medicine. So um, I joined Teach for America, which moved me to Newark, New Jersey, and I taught middle school science there. So what I found pretty quickly on in my first year was that. Um, teaching science was a great way to um, not just practice but share my love of science but also to work with people which were both things that I really wanted so um, after my two-year commitment through Teach for America I moved to one of our Kip middle schools where I continued to teach middle school science for several years um, and being a part of Kip has been something that's been very uh, special to me I think the organization brings a lot to students in and servicing and supporting students on their path to and through college. So when, um, when the opportunity came about um, to think about becoming a school leader and expanding to Camden, I knew it was something that I couldn't pass up. Um, being able to come to a city that needs even more great schools and being able to continue my work with KIPP was really important. And this is your first year in Camden. Can you talk yes. about what the reality has been like versus what you might have heard living and teaching up in North Jersey and Newark? Yeah. Um, 
So the reality has been that children are children no matter what city you're in. And the kids that um, we're serving here are the same kids that you would find anywhere in that they, they want to learn, they're excited about learning, they love coming to school, they're happy, they, um, they really crave time with each other and time getting smarter. Um, I think something I had to learn more about was the history of education in the city and how that is similar or different to other cities that I've worked in and what that means for our kids and their families and how we can make sure that we're supporting um, not just who they are as a student but the whole child and all of their families to make sure that they're successful. Can you tell us about a particular student either here um, or back from your teaching days in Newark who you're particularly proud of the growth that um, he or she is making or made? Yes. So one student that I'm very proud of that I still continue to keep in touch with is Michael, who is currently a junior at Newark Collegiate Academy, which is Kipps High School in Newark. Um, and I taught Michael in my first year at Kipp, um, which um, w it, my first year at Kipp was Michael's third year in the fifth grade. Um, not all three years were with us, but it was his third time repeating the grade. So when I met Michael, he was um, physically bigger than the other kids, but also um, really far behind them still academically. So uh, he was often frustrated and challenged, um, but over the years I got to know Michael better and he's become one of our most successful kids. And so I think Michael for me has been inspirational because he, his story speaks to the power of a network and what it means to, um, to know that when our kids leave one grade level, they're going to continue on a path with strong teachers every single year and a strong support system. Michael has proven that um, when you have a strong school and a strong support system in place year after year, that you can overcome some of the challenges that, that you might face in your day-to-day -day reality. <laughs> uh, um, can you take us through a typical day um, here as, as principal? What does it mean to be you for a day? Yes. So a typical day, um, I, I work very hard to spend as much of my time as possible on instruction and making sure that we're um, teaching and coaching teachers to be instructional experts. And so, of course, there's a lot of other things that come up throughout the day. Um, recruiting next year's teachers or working with our director of school operations on the budget or on facilities. Um, but the majority of my time is spent in classrooms observing teachers and then having follow-up meetings where I provide them with feedback and we practice and talk about how they will improve for the next week. So every teacher gets a weekly observation and a weekly 03 one-on-one um, -on -one meeting with myself or our assistant principal and uh, we, we work really hard to make sure that the majority of our time is spent on that weekly coaching and feedback cycle as well as the weekly professional development we have for our teachers. Um, and can you talk to us a little bit about family involvement here at KIPP and what that looks like? Being a part of a neighborhood and being a neighborhood school has been a huge blessing for us. So our families um, the majority of our kids are picked up and dropped off every day and so we have the opportunity to speak with family members of our children both at arrival and dismissal every day which has really been incredible. Um, in addition to that we have Saturday schools where we invite all of our families to attend with their child and the purpose of those really is community building and making sure that we're building strong relationships between the staff, the students and their families. And we also offer family nights um, throughout the year, we recently hosted a family math night where we brought our families and our kids together to play math games together and talk about how families and parents can reinforce math learning at home, for example. Um, and just next week, we have a family potluck coming up, so our parents are going to be bringing in dishes and having a cook-off, which will be sure to provide a lot of fun and excitement. Um, and here at KIPP we also make sure that all of our families have our teachers cell phone numbers and email addresses because it's important to us that our families know that we're not just here um, from 7.30 to 4.30 but that we're there for them and our kids all the time. Uh, what is one thing that is true about you that your students and staff would not suspect? 
One thing that's true about me that my students and staff would not suspect is that I'm actually very sensitive. Um, and I think when I'm, when I'm at school, there's a level and a sense of urgency that's hard to deny. And so we remain very focused and making sure that we're working hard and not wasting any minute at school. Um, but I spend a lot of time outside of school um, thinking about how to make sure that those minutes are best used and considering all sides and making sure that um, the needs of not just our kids and our family are met, but that the needs of our staff is met as well. What does Ms. Karaki do for fun? For fun, I enjoy um, catching up with friends and going out to dinner with them or maybe going to catch a movie. I like to um, relax at home and uh, watch what's maybe filled up my DVR. <laughs> Um, and I love to travel, so when I do have time off, I love to either go to new places or um, go back to Chicago uh, to visit some of my family. And your students are just, I guess, five years old, a lot of them right now. They're in kindergarten. Ideally, in 11 years from now, when they're graduating from high school, what do you want them to look back at their elementary education and, 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 and think and feel? I hope that when our kids go to college and graduate from college that they will look back at their elementary years and know that they had a team of people behind them who are willing to do whatever it takes to make sure that they're successful. And I hope that they look back on these years and know that they were well prepared for um, the academic and social challenges that are ahead of them and know that they, um, that they have the support of an entire staff of people and their families there right by their side. It's time for Express Yourself, and we will turn the microphone over to Destiny Truitt, a sophomore at Woodrow Wilson, who was a finalist in the statewide Shout Down Drugs competition. Destiny received hundreds of votes online. Congratulations, Destiny. Let's give a listen. Express Yourself. We've been through the struggles and problems, the pain. Nobody has saved us from all this today. They say it's amazing, you shouldn't believe it. We should say, no the drugs, no the drugs for your life. Don't huff, don't pop, keep away from that stuff. You really should stop, cause enough is enough. Uh, do don't lose hope. Everybody needs to go around the ropes. Yeah, drugs are white, so watch your back. Dope dealers try to make a couple stacks. Everybody telling you all these facts, but you don't even wanna listen, you should turn your back. Uh, do a good D and kill the weed. If you aren't drug free, you can hang with me. Drug free is the way to be, and everybody keep on saying you deserve to be free. Like, we've been through the struggles, the problems. Problems and pain. Nobody has saved us from all this today. They say it's amazing. You shouldn't believe it. We should say no to drugs, no to drugs for your life. Wasted social life and everybody keep on coming for the third rate right? and everybody keep on looking at you like you're blind, you're selfish eyes, you need to stop wasting time, what's on your mind, you need to stop being a junkie cause you something, you out here being on these streets like you are nothing, you need to stop coming back to these drugs and everybody just giving out all these hugs, yeah. Yeah, we been through the struggles, the problems, the pain. Nobody has saved us from all this today. They say it's amazing, you shouldn't believe it. We should say no to drugs, no to drugs for your life. Everyone just believe in you. I'm gonna help you get up too. I believe in you. You can shine brighter than diamond, do this. For you, everybody needs help in their lives. Just do it for the light. God's gonna help you shine tonight. We've been through the struggles, the problems, the pain. Nobody has saved us from all this today. They say it's amazing. You shouldn't believe it. We should say no to drugs. No the drugs for your life. 
Our guest interview this week is with Kadeem Pratt, an alum of Camden High School. Kadeem was recently named a McNair Scholar, which is a very prestigious honor. During our recent interview, Kadeem told me of his path to success, which involves stops at three colleges, and he isn't done yet. As a native of Camden, uh, all of my schooling happened here in the city of Camden. I was a student of John G. Whittier Elementary School, which has now become a family school. Mm -hmm. uh, middle school, my sixth grade to eighth grade year was spent at Cooper B. Hatch Middle School, mm -hmm. which is also now a family school. Um, high schooling, uh, nine, nine through 12, Camden High School, where I graduated and proceeded to go into uh, higher education. What about your experience at those schools helped you develop those passions, whether it was certain classes or certain teachers, certain experiences? What helped you uh, kind of grow the interest that you currently have today? Yes, the person I am today, I uh, have to attribute solely to um, the interactions amongst my teachers and peers in middle school, John G. I mean, Cooper V. Hash Middle School. Mm. Um, I had a science teacher by, by the name of Miss, uh, e Missy Johnson. Um, she, she actually helped blossom the, 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 the nurture the, the science inside of this kid. Uh, she introduced me to the study of life, to the study of the atmosphere itself. And I just became so intrigued with the vast knowledge that was out there that I can attain. And I just wanted to know it all. I just wanted to be a sponge and absorb it. And um, in a way she kept me on a straightened path. Um, because I was, a, I was a student that tend to uh, uh, go off when I, when, I, when I lose interest in things. I would, I would tend to go off, go off track and go off into things that, you know, venture into things I had no, had no business doing. Uh, sure. Maybe late to class or just tardy and draw in the class when I should be studying. So what she did was she introduced me to Mr. Dawson, um, who was the head of our tech department. Um, uh, working with Mr. Dawson, uh, I actually began to serve on our yearbook committee. I actually was the head of the yearbook committee. Hmm. Uh, put together our yearbook for our my eighth grade class. Um, so I, then I realized, like, wow, uh, I actually have a passion for technology. I actually like combine, I like making things. I, I figured I had a creative side. So not only did Mr. Dawson teach me how to how to work in Photoshop uh, and as a sixth grade student all, all three years, oh. I actually came. I, I believe I came a kind of a pro at Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, he actually taught me how to actually um, reboot computers, how to disassemble and reassemble motherboards of computers. Wow. So it's like I, I was a middle school student, but yeah. working, clearly working my way on up to college and getting prepared. A little bit of, I, it was unbeknownst to me at the time, yeah. but now I see. Uh, any lessons you've learned along the way, uh, brief lessons that you can share uh, with students who might be watching, students who might be at Hatch now and wondering what they're going to be doing when they're in your shoes? Absolutely, absolutely. Stay determined, stay determined. Whatever you tell yourself, a lot of things I'm doing now are, are goals that I set for myself literally when I was in middle school, when I was going to transition into high school. Okay. These, are, these are things that I wanted to see change. So these are things that I told myself that I will change. You know, I didn't have a plan of how I was going to get there, but mm. I knew I was going to get there, you know. That's so right. it's more of have faith, you know, have faith. And we want to see a lot, a lot of our youth, a lot of our youth recognize it's a problem in Camden and they right. want to see change. My advice, my sole advice, my soul, my golden advice that I would give to, to, to the youth coming up in our city of Camden is to be the change you want to see. Just to be, the, to be that change, you know, you have to. It must start somewhere. Thank you for watching this episode of CCSD News and Review. Stay up to date with district happenings by liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter, and watching us on YouTube. For Brendan Lowe, I'm Diane Harmon. Have a great day.